With that, Dave, do you want to go ahead and start taking questions at this time? Sure. Thank you, Mary. So uh, with the time that we have, we're going to answer some questions that we have received. There are several questions that we've received uh, in advance of today's webinar. So let me begin with those. Uh, this is the first question. What are the requirements when there is a zero percentage goal? Well, the answer to that is first, we want to make sure that this is a federally funded project. And if it's a federally funded project with a zero goal, as a local government, you definitely want to capture the race neutral participation if there is a DBE on that project. And so local governments, you have to make sure that the prime contractor submits its race neutral participation on a project with a zero percentage goal. Mary, is there anything else you want to add to this question? No. Okay. All right, so then the second question is, how is a DBE goal determined? And that's a very good question. So what happens is our goal section in the Civil Rights Division looks at every federally, federal funded project to determine if there are subcontracting opportunities. So they look at all the items of work on that project. They determine if there are available certified DBEs in that geographic area that are able to perform that type of work. And as such, they will then make a determination whether that project uh, is going to be assigned a goal. So again, they look at the uh, scope of work, the subcontracting opportunities, they look at the available certified DBEs in that geographic area, and that's part of their goal setting methodology. Anything you want to add to that, Mary? It's very complete. Okay. This next question is also a very good one and a very interesting one. Can the goal be reviewed or changed? Can the goal be reviewed or changed? Do you want to take that, Mary? You want me to? The goal can be reviewed and changed only during the negotiation between the LG and the Civil Rights Division. However, once the goal is published, it can no longer be revised or changed. But if during the submission of the commitments, they, the prime did not meet in whole and part, the assigned goal will remain the same, but the participation will receive an exemption. But the answer is no, once it's published, it cannot be changed. This next question uh, is, how is this going to affect consultant record keepers? How is this going to affect consultant record keepers? And I'm going to do my best to answer this question. So it's the local government's responsibility to assign personnel to administer the DBE uh, program requirements. And I'm not sure if the local government is hiring consultant record keepers to do that. So for the person that posed this question, I would recommend that you get with your LG to see if this is one of your responsibilities. For example, TxDOT has hired consultants to help with the administration of the DBE program. And as such, those consultants have similar responsibilities as TxDOT personnel to make sure that all of the DBE requirements are monitored during the course of the project. Okay, uh, other questions, Mary? <clears throat> okay, we received one. Can we use this presentation for prime contractors? Yes, we highly recommend it. And we also highly recommend to your DB subcontractors. Um, and also, too, we highly recommend sharing the guides. All right, here's another well, question. Well, one thing I also want to add, Mary, that, that is a good question. But we have developed a guide for prime contractors and also some PowerPoint presentations. The uh, prime contractors DBE guide will also be uh, published and posted on our website next week. So local governments, I would um, uh, encourage you to inform your prime contractors that there is a similar guide and PowerPoint presentation for them as well. But as Mary said, sure, you can uh, share this uh, webinar with them as we well. highly recommend it. <laughs> Next else? question, quote, if I understand correctly, there is a new form 2658 that LGs must fill in and make available for TxDOT review. 
Is it intended that LG start using this form on existing construction contracts or on upcoming projects starting if their form is made available? And the answer is yes and yes. And we highly recommend that contacting your, your DDC also too, they can provide you with that or provide you further guidance. But yes. Yeah. Mary said that she recommends that you contact your DDC. And for those of you that don't know, DDC is an acronym that stands for District DBE Coordinator. So they will be able to help, to, uh, help you uh, give you more information on this form. This next question we may have to answer at another time and see if we can understand it. What happens if a DB firm was part of a winning team on a CEI contract but was never given the opportunity to participate in the work? What resource does a DB firm recourse. have, recourse, excuse me, does a DB firm have in these situations? Looking at this, Dave, I'm trying to figure out if it, if it is assumed that the DB was a, when you say winning team, I'm going to assume they're on a commitment. If they're on a commitment and the work scope changed, that could be considered an exception and that commitment could be considered um, approved for not meeting that commitment. But that's the assumption I'm making. And it also states what recourse does a DB firm have in these situations. Back to if it is a commitment, the DB has the recourse that that commitment must be met in full or in full unless there are ex ex exceptions. So that DB would have that right to expect that. If that assumption is correct, I don't know. Well, I think this will be, have to be a question that can be uh, sent to our email uh, address that's there on the, on the screen. And so we can, we can um, address that question. Yeah with the person who, who brought this up. Okay, so we have some other questions that are uh, we're looking at here. Um, let me see here. If the, if the DBE does not submit payrolls, should we withhold payment for the items of work they performed? If we give them an extended time period to provide the payrolls, would we be wrong then to remove the previous pay and create negative entries for the work. I don't see that we have any other tools to get them to turn in the payrolls. So it's a very good question. Um, you know, prime contractors and DBEs have contractual obligations to submit uh, uh, record information. And so uh, I'm not certain if um, the person who posed this question, if you have reached out to the prime contractor to get uh, the prime to assist this information. I would be very, I would be very concerned though of attaching a certified payroll to a DBE payment. Yes, as Dave mentioned, the DBE has responsibility contractually to, but I would, at this particular point, I would seek guidance from the LG and or and the LG can seek guides from tech stuff needed because we want to be very careful that we don't include certified payrolls with DBE compliance on commitments and, and monthly payment reports, excuse me. But I think what this person is also asking again is, you know, this DBE is not submitting not cooperating. Not cooperating, not fulfilling its contractual obligation. You know, what what um, uh, uh, remedies do we have to enforce this? And the first thing is I would get with the prime contractor. Yes. Get with the prime contractor and say, okay, your DB is not submitting this information. We need this. We need this by a certain timeline. So that's one thing that I would recommend that you do. Next question that is uh, asked is, when does the local government stop submitting forms 2177, that's the prompt payment form, and 4903, which is the monthly progress reporting form? When did they... When does the LG stop submitting the forms? The 2177 will become a month after the final payment of the 4903. Once the prime contractor submitted the final all participation, then a month later the 2177 will come in to address those payments from the previous month. Okay. Keep in mind, and I apologize, I should have included this in my, in my uh, slides, is that prompt pay in the 2170 is for all subs and not just DBEs. So all subcontractors do fall under that provision. So in that 2177, it's, please make sure that you not only report DBE disputes, but all disputes. Okay. The next question, can you give an example of how a change order impacts the DBE goal? 
The one that probably happens more often is when a change order removes work. And if that particular change order removes a DBE commitment work, then the prime contractor may have some issues because they no longer can honor that work. If the change order increases the work, then at that particular point, the feds have provided us recent guidance that state that if the assigned goal now has increased participation, then increased participation may have to occur for those change orders where it's increased. Yeah, Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, in the guide, you'll see an example of, of how that can happen. And I think the slide that you talked about, mm -hmm. Mary, is again, we're looking at the total contract value. Exactly. So if, let's say the project is a million dollars and it has increased by several hundred thousand dollars and we're looking at the DBE goal on the total contract value, okay? Uh, and then so will we'll USLG have to ensure that the prime contractor made good faith efforts to meet the DBE goal based on the total contract value, you know? Uh, perhaps there were subcontracting opportunities for DBEs uh, that performed some of the items or work on that project. And, and as such, you'll have to evaluate that. Okay, the next question. Are forms required during the maintenance period? Hmm. And so the DBE goal in most cases is set on either professional or construction activity. Mm -hmm. And as such, we're wanting DBE monitoring and monthly progress report forms and so forth to be submitted either during the professional or construction phases. Uh, I have yet to see, well, I don't know that uh, any LG projects have a goal assigned to the maintenance period. That we're aware of. That we're aware of. Now we do see uh, there, it may be a very rare case where there are goals assigned to a maintenance on a design build project, but that's extremely rare. So I would say, uh, look, go back to where the goal was assigned to, was it assigned to the professional or construction stage? And that, and as such, that's, that's what the forms pertain to. Uh, may the DBE use a staff leasing company and Mary you want to answer that? Yes and actually that was an issue many many years ago but of course if the DB uses the staff leasing company then that is their actual crew or labor and what will happen though sometimes is that the documentation will reveal itself in a C of review when you're looking at payrolls but absolutely yes a DB can use a staff leasing company as long as it's a legitimate agreement and as long as the DBE actually maintains control of that staff, thus meaning hiring and firing. But yes, the answer is yes. Uh, another good question is, does a claim constitute a prompt payment violation? Does a claim prompt, uh, constitute a prompt payment violation? Dave, I, I think I would need clarity is that are they talking about a claim with a surety or are they talking about a claim? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, uh, however, once prompt pay, if there is a dispute, then that does not preclude the parties from filing a lien on the surety or a claim, but I, really we need probably more information on that to answer that correctly. Okay. Uh, next question, is Form 2658 available now? The answer is yes, it is on the text.website website DBE forms. It is available now. Uh, next question, uh, thanks. I agree that the prime contractors should be enforcing the DBE requirements, especially since they are subcontracted to them. You were correct. I was just wondering what methods you all thought were appropriate. To me, withholding pay is the only way to get their attention after emails, letters, and phone calls just don't work. So. Um, I don't know if there's a question here, more of a statement. Well, it's a good yeah. point. I think yeah. I think the point is that um, the LGs uh, need to use whatever resources and actions that are that are at their uh, disposal to to enforce uh, compliance. And so, uh, in most cases, prime contractors and DBEs are cooperative, but there are some where the department or the LG needs to take those actions necessary. And one of those uh, uh, actions is withholding payment. Yeah, let me add that, that if the DBE is uncooperative for various reasons, and particularly this, 
is that that could become cause for termination. And uh, the L, excuse me, the prime contractor at that time, after exhausting all of their methods, can also remind the DBE if it's a DB commitment that the issue is, is that this could be cause for termination. That sometimes can get your extra attention, also. Yeah, and over the years, the advice that we have given to the district staff and also LGs is go back to the DBE special provision. Go to the DBE special provision with that language that says this is what your requirement is, and in addition. These are the consequences that if you don't um, uh, fulfill those requirements. But what I would recommend is work with the prime contractors uh, if at all possible, and, and if not, take whatever actions are appropriate. And if you need guidance, contact the district, district offices as well. Okay, next question, uh, change, order, change orders. Does the DBE goal apply to increase change orders or just the original base contract? I understand that the contract value of the, the, assi the percentage of assigned to the contract value will be the assigned goal. That, say for instance, 5%. That 5% will never change. However, when a change order increases the value of the contract, then that 5% will be applied to that additional value. I hope yeah. that answers it. Yeah, good answer. Okay, next question. Does the DBE monthly report need to be submitted during a month when there is no work on a project? And the answer, Mary? Is yes. And it's basically more of an auditing measure, but it's to ensure that each month was recognized. Okay. But yes. Next question. Will this recorded webinar be available? Yes, it will be. We're going to send you an email by next Friday with a link to the recording along with some other resources. Okay, so good questions. Very good questions. Are there any other questions? Okay, there's no other questions. So I want to thank you again so much for taking the time out of your work schedule to join us for today's webinar. As I mentioned from the very beginning, we are going to make available uh, several resources uh, to you. One is the recorded webinar. Two is the compliance guide. And um, the third thing are, is a PowerPoint presentation. We'll make the corrections on our PowerPoint presentation and post that. <laughs> and again, as I mentioned also, please don't forget that we're gonna also be sending you a survey to complete. We ask that you please complete the survey and give us feedback. But again, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we appreciate all that you do to help us monitor DB program requirements. Have a great weekend. Thank, thank you. you.